Thank you. I welcome you to this communion service. We've been having civil uh, trouble, but thank God it has ended. And uh, we are back. This is about the third attempt now. We believe this time around it will stay. This is our communion service, and well, we are live streaming on Facebook and on YouTube. Right, I'm trying to set up the YouTube uh, stream now so that uh, it will be going on simultaneously. Well, this communion service. The enemy cannot stop it from happening. I welcome every one of you. The topic is not on this on this video right now as I am um, live. The mystery of iniquity. Today we are going to pray. I want to see how we can move things faster because. For the past 20 minutes, we've been battling to get the stream live, to get to be on the internet. So, let's just pray, and then my wife will come lead worship, and then I will teach. And after the teaching, we will take the communion, and I'll pray on your anointing oil. I want to assure you that even if this broadcast goes offline, or rather, even if we lose signal which i don't think will happen i am going to come back immediately back uh, to the service we are not going to give up we are not going to be discouraged amen so let's give god praise for what he's done for us The maker and possessor of heaven and earth. We thank you that you, Lord Jesus, will build your church and the gates of heaven of hell shall not prevail against your church. We are grateful for that assurance in the mighty Lord, we praise your name. Father, we commit this broadcast unto you. We ask that it shall be clear, it shall not be broken. The signals will go on smoothly. And at beginning to end of the service, Lord, your presence will be with us. And that when we leave understanding of your word, we ask, Lord, that every aspect of this service will take control. Put to shame and to flight them that hate your name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And Lord, we ask that you forgive our sins, forgive the thoughts of our hearts, the words of our mouth, and our actions. Turn the hearts of everyone to you. And Lord, thank you once again. We plead the blood of Jesus over this transmission and over the gadgets being used in transmission and reception. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I am David Aigona, and this is David Aigona Ministries. You are all welcome. Thank you for joining. In the next five minutes, please share this video. I want to say five minutes so that you are sure that the signals remain. My wife, Rosemary, is coming to lead uh, worship and praise, and then I will be back for the teaching. Mystery of Amen. A lot there for us to learn. Thank you all. Okay. Hello everyone. Praise and peace to you. He's alive. He's alive. Amen. He's alive. Amen. He's alive. Jesus is alive. Forever he's alive, amen. He's alive, amen. He's alive, 
is alive. Jesus is alive. Forever he's alive. Amen. To us. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. That we should be called the sons of God. That we should be called the sons of God. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. That we should be called the sons of God. That we should be called the sons of God. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. That we should be called the sons of God. That we should be called the sons of God. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. That we should be called the sons of God. That we should be called the sons of God. You deserve all the glory. Yahweh, Yahweh. You deserve all the glory. Yahweh, Yahweh. You deserve, you deserve all the glory. Yahweh, Father to the fatherless. Yahweh, Yahweh. No one can love me like you do. Yahweh, Yahweh. You deserve all the glory. Yahweh, Yahweh, you deserve all the glory. Wow. <sighs> Thank you for joining. The interference is really not funny, it's really annoying. But the gates of hell shall not prevail. Thank you all for joining. Thank you. Uh, I see Laura, thank you Terry, thank you Jacqueline, thank you Ava. Yeah, the enemy is really frustrated at the teaching of today. I'm even finding it difficult. I wanted to go live on YouTube, but Rana, is it, are you able to record me now? Huh? Okay. I was trying to be live on YouTube simultaneously. Each time I try, maybe five minutes, three minutes, it goes off. But we'll continue. The gates of hell shall not prevail. I'm going to be teaching today on the topic, mystery of iniquity. Glory to God, our Messiah Jesus Christ came, died, and rose again so that we may have life and life in him. So we are celebrating this period of Passover. We are celebrating um, Resurrection Weekend. We are celebrating Jesus. We are going to be taking the communion and we'll be praying on our anointing oil. The teaching is mystery of iniquity. What is the mystery of iniquity? And how is it relevant for us to know what the mystery of iniquity is. Look around you and you can see how much the enemy has paralyzed people with fear. Lots of people are paralyzed with fear. They are confused, not knowing what to do at this time. It's as though the world is in confusion and perplexity. But I am not speaking about the plagues that are going around. I'm going to be speaking about the source of the human reaction to these plagues. Why is it that people reacted the way they did? People are still reacting how they are reacting. We need to look at the source 
of this attitude, the source, is what I'm, um, I'm dealing with today. If, this, if the live feed goes off, I'm going to come back on again. I'm not abandoning my duty post. Let's look at the Bible. We're going to read 2 Thessalonians. Let's understand what this mystery of iniquity is. As we go to 2 Thessalonians, sorry, I'm unable, even my computer screen now is not showing anything. So please, you can put the scripture out. Anyone can just put it out as a comment. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. We are going to read the entire chapter of 2 Thessalonians. You see, what people call vibrations, energy, you know, people say, well, um, negative energy, negative vibrations. The Bible calls those things the, in, the mystery of iniquity. This negative energy and negative uh, vibrations, they are the, the energy that is generated from sin that is generated from iniquity. When there is sin, there is an energy that is generated and disbursed through individuals. And that is called the mystery of iniquity. The Bible says it is already at work. And there is the time when this iniquity force has reached its peak and then the embodiment of iniquity will be able to manifest. And that is the man of sin, the Antichrist, the son of perdition. He can manifest when the iniquity force is sufficient for his manifestation. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, I'm going to read the entire chapter. Okay, you want to read? Come, David. So I guess now you can share the video. I believe this feed is going to stay. Go ahead, Second Thessalonians. Now, now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not, be not shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, no, by letter as from us, as that the day of, the, of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposed and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as so that he as God seated in the temple of God, showing himself uh, that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now, and no, and now ye know that know what withholded that he might that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity does, does already work, does already work. Only he who, knew, who now let it, who now let it will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him who is, who is who is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion. That they should live, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned, who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound, 
but we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God had because God had from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of and belief of the truth whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught. Okay. All right. Hallelujah. Now, let's look at this. This is uh, David. Get me a glass of water. Let's look at this Second Thessalonians chapter two. Now, by the way, I'm just saying this. Not uh, last week Sunday we did a teaching on rapture. That one was really um, there was interference on YouTube. YouTube took out the volume, so some people got to watch it, but others didn't get volume in that teaching. I had to delete the video from YouTube because it was muted. So today now, I just want to say something concerning this rapture. You look here in verse 2 and 3, Paul is referring to the second coming of the Lord. He says that they should not be scared. In verse 2, he's saying, do not be scared or troubled as though the second com- as, as though Christ's coming has already taken place. He says, until the man of sin is revealed, that second coming cannot take place. So here the Bible is saying that the second coming of Christ is after the appearing of the Antichrist. The Bible goes on to describe how that second coming is, which we call the rapture. And so, the Bible describes it, all right? Okay, the scriptural reference is 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1 to 12. I am unable to type on my computer. My computer is just, it's not just working right now. It's showing a blank screen. And I cannot type on my phone the comment. So please, it's 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, from verse 1 to 12. So here Paul has said, okay, the second coming of Christ comes after the manifestation of the Antichrist. And we saw that the process of the second coming, when the saints go up to meet Christ before he comes down, that is what people call the rapture. So here we see it clearly that rapture is the process of Christ coming down. It's not an event that will take place and then there will be seven years and all. His, all right. So now, <clears throat> the mystery of iniquity is first understood. I was reading from Second Thessalonians chapter two. Thessalonians chapter two. Second Thessalonians chapter two. From chapter two, one to twelve, verse one to twelve. Iniquity has to be understood before we know the force that comes with iniquity. Iniquity is knowingly doing what is wrong. That is iniquity. All unrighteousness is sin. All unrighteousness is sin. Thank you, Terry, for posting it. All unrighteousness is sin. But there are different kinds of sin. Transgression is a kind of sin. Transgression is when you do something wrong because you didn't know it was wrong. That's transgression. All right? For example, uh, in the Old Testament, if somebody, a lady in her in her menstrual period were to go close to the temple because she didn't know it was wrong. She has transgressed because she didn't know that the law of Moses said when a lady is in her menstrual period, 
she is ritually unclean. She's supposed to stay at home. So if she didn't know it and she went close, she has transgressed. It's a sin, but it's a sin by ignorance. Iniquity is when the person knows that what he or she is doing is wrong and still does it anyway. That is the difference between transgression and iniquity. You need a chair? David, put a chair for Mr. Kenneth so that he can do it well. That is what uh, iniquity is. I'm trying to record this thing. My son is recording it with another phone so that we can upload it to YouTube. So Benjamin, you can put the chair just somewhere here. But David, put the chair here. Then you can go ahead, all right? Okay, my technical crew are at their duty post. Okay, turn it a little. And I'm sitting. All right. So now iniquity is when you know what you are doing is wrong and you still opt to do it. Stretch it out. You still opt to do that which is wrong. It's called iniquity. In 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 26. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 26. We are still coming back to Thessalonians. The Bible says that stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Stubbornness. The Bible says rebellion is like witchcraft. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Iniquity is when you do that which is wrong and you know you knowingly do it all right you know what you are about to do is wrong and yet you go ahead and you do it that is iniquity and so satan's energy is mainly from iniquity it's mainly from iniquity because iniquity is like idolatry. Idolatry is worshipping an idol. And the idol in the picture is self. The idol called self. The dictionary says iniquity is rejecting the sovereignty of God. So when you are carrying out iniquity, you are doing it to please yourself, knowing fully well that it is wrong. You have made yourself an idol, or you have made that person you are trying to please an idol. Sometimes you do things that are wrong to please someone. You have made that person an idol, and so you are committing idolatry. And Satan requires the the human being to permit him for him to operate he has his limitations the devil was invited into this world when adam and eve sinned when adam and eve sinned satan was invited he was given the earth but he could not exercise his authority that he got from the sin of adam and eve until sin was multiplied. You see, the devil is limited. He is limited. And so as sin was multiplied, the, the devil was able to exercise that authority more. He was able to exercise it more because of the multiplicity of sin. And so Satan requires that you commit sin knowingly for him to petition God to punish you. You know, when somebody does something wrong and without knowing, you didn't know what you had, when you transgress, there is a grace and a mercy that God shows to, to you. All right? God looks at it as he didn't know what he was doing was wrong. So let's give him some grace. Let's inform him of what he has done. Yes, Eva, we have to invite. You see, God has placed so much power in man such that we either invite him through prayers. When we pray to God, we invite him into our situation. Or we commit sin and invite the devil into our lives. Man makes the decision who to invite. And so 
when you transgress, God shows you some mercy. He says, okay, let's inform him or her that she has transgressed. The devil is restrained from exercising his, uh, his authority of, of, of uh, torment. Right? The devil is restrained until that individual comes to the realization of what he or she has done. In some cases, while in some cases, the consequences will come. But when it comes to iniquity, you have an immediate release of judgment. You have an immediate release of the consequences, which is Satan has authority to manifest. And so because people know the truth and refuse to accept the truth, Satan is unleashed into their lives. He is unleashed into this world. Now, before, let's do it this way. In Romans chapter 1, there is a scripture there in Romans chapter 1 where Paul describes iniquity clearly. In Romans chapter 1, the Bible says, I think verse 23, let me look at it. The Bible says that they knew that God was God, but they refused to acknowledge him as God. And so he gave them up. He gave them up to vain imaginations and to a reprobate mind. Let me read it. It's Romans chapter 1 verse uh, 21. Because they, when they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. If you go to verse 24, it says, Therefore God gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own heart to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. And in verse 26, it says, For God gave them up unto vile affections. So you see this, that when people know that there is God, deny his existence, when people refuse to follow the word of God, God gives them up. He gives them up. Now, Satan does not snatch them. God gives them to the devil. And what happens is that their mindset is changed. The Bible says that their mind is corrupted. He gives them up to a reprobate mind. In verse 28, he says, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, it reminds you of what is happening. In verse 28 of that Romans chapter 1, he says, even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, meaning those things that are not wise. God gave them up. Since they knew, look at what is happening now. You see that when there was announcement of a pandemic, people were rushing to gather not fruits and vegetables, which you expect they would gather because of the minerals and vitamins. They didn't go for fruits and vegetables. They didn't go for uh, food. They went fighting over toilet paper. What was happening there? These people have refused to acknowledge God. The Western world took the gospel to Africa and Asia. There are many people that have this idea. I used to think that way, that almost every American is a Christian. But when I was watching when I was watching uh, Hollywood movies, I'm wondering why so much cursing, why so much immorality. I, these are the people that gave us, they still send us Bibles. They preach to us. And what is happening? There's a lot of taking the name of the Lord in vain by people that claim that there is no God. Why will you be insulting someone you claim does not exist? You are taking the name of someone you claim not to exist in vain. 
Hello, Jim Clark. You're welcome. Please share the video, everyone. So now you have people in the West who are, who are taking the name of God in vain, who know the Bible because they printed the Bible. This Bible comes from the Western part of the world. The Bibles I grew up with came from America. And now, because they refuse to acknowledge him as God, God gave them over to the devil that they will not think right. And that is why people were grab fighting over toilet paper rather than fighting over food supplies. Because the mind has been damaged by the mystery of iniquity. There will be revival in America, there will be revival in Europe. The West is going to see revival. We are praying and there is a prophecy and I believe that to be from God that the seed that was sown by the Western missionaries in Africa, their children will reap it. Because from Africa, apostles will arise to evangelize the children of the missionaries. And then there will be revival all over the world. It's going to happen. Because the, your parents, those of you in the western part of the world, your parents have sown seeds. Your great-great-great-grandparents, they sowed seeds. They were killed in the jungle. They were beaten by mosquitoes while preaching the gospel. They sowed seeds. And God is not unrighteous as to forget their labor. And so from Africa, apostles will arise that will take the, the gospel to the children of the missionaries and there will be revival in the east and in the west so now the devil is able to gain control of the minds of the people through the power of iniquity because now God gives them over he gives them over to the devil and the devil messes their minds up and that is why people are so deceived. That is why this trick of the enemy to shut down and destroy the world's economy seems to be working in many places. And that is why the, the fear is irrational. The reaction is irrational. The way people are just collapsing before this fear de f panic demic it's it's surprising but not really surprising because god has given them over to a reprobate mind to believe a lie the bible says they will believe a lie because they refuse to acknowledge god he says now the dumbest of tricks of the devil will take you by storm. He gives them over. That's the mystery of iniquity. And that is the power by which Satan operates. That's the negative energy. Is it? No more memory space. <laughs> okay. Just see how you can save it. Huh? See what you can do to save it. The phone I was using to record is... Is in need of replacement anyway, but we'll see what we can record for YouTube. Okay, so now Satan requires people reject God, reject the word of God for him to gain control of their minds and their actions. All people need to do to turn things around, all they need to do is to call upon the name of the Lord. As simple as that. People are saying, oh, we need to go out there and rebel. We need to demonstrate. We need to get some bombs and throw into this uh, government uh, buildings. We need to go and uh, shake the Rothschilds. We need to punch their faces. You can't punch their faces. They are smarter than that. All that needs to be done to topple the new world government 
is for people to call upon the name of the Lord. It's so simple. You call upon the name of the Lord and God shows up and intervenes. You know one thing that is going to um, bring shorten the great tribulation? The saints praying. The Bible says in the book of Revelations that the saints were crying out to God, How long, O Lord, will you not avenge us? How long, O Lord? It was their prayer that made God shorten it. The Bible says that robes were given to these saints who had been killed. Robes were given to them and they were comforted that in a short while. And so, if we were to rise up in prayer, in repentance, the force of darkness would be bound. Let me tell you this. People are going to rise up in prayer. They are going to rise up. And so what the NWO is planning will not all come to pass. The new world order is prophesied to come. You see, what they want to do, God will not allow them to do it all because his saints are praying and they are going to pray. They are going to cry out and God will shorten those days. God will limit what the NWO can do, the new world order. He will limit what they can do. It has been prophesied that there will be a falling away. All right? The falling away comes before the manifestation of the son of perdition. If you read through this chapter 2 of Second Thessalonians, the Bible speaks of a falling away. It is after the falling away that the son of perdition, the Antichrist, can manifest himself. He needs a falling away first because the power through which he will manifest and exercise authority is the mystery of iniquity. Because the people who ha- would have heard the gospel and rejected the gospel. They would have heard the gospel and rejected the gospel. That is why the Antichrist will be able to come. Even the Antichrist himself is somebody that at some point in his existence had a positive relationship with God. I want to show you that from the scripture. In this second Thessalonians chapter 2, he is referred to by two names, the man of sin and the son of perdition in verse 3. He is called keep your voices down. He is called the man of sin, he is called the son of perdition. There are only two people in the Bible that have answered that title, son of perdition. One is Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed Jesus Christ. The second person is the Antichrist. Only two people have ever had that title, son of perdition. And the Antichrist is described as one who was alive, died, and is coming back. You know, we believe he is coming out of the bottomless pit and is going to get into a human body and manifest. And so, the Antichrist is likely to be someone, pardon me, is likely to be someone who at some point knew God and then went away. I believe that one candidate that fits that description is Nimrod, the one that built the Tower of Babel. Because he is still being worshipped today in, with different names. Baal and uh, 
Osiris, others, and we know that CERN, C-E-R-N, that Hedron Collider, they are trying to bring people out from another dimension into our dimension. So I personally, this is my opinion, from what I have researched, I believe the Antichrist is Nimrod coming back. And when I did a study on Nimrod's history, that is one that built the Tower of Babel, the early stages of Nimrod's life, he was God-fearing. And then he rebelled, he turned against God, altered his DNA, he became a gibbering. That is, he became a giant. The Bible in book says, and he became a mighty man. That is a giborim. The Hebrew word there is giborim, a giant. And he turned against God to the point that he built the Tower of Babel. He was building the Tower of Babel as an act of defiance, and God dealt with him. Remember, the Bible says a head of the beast had a deadly wound. A head, one of the heads of the beast had a deadly wound and that wound was healed and people marveled after the beast so a deadly wound is going to be healed i believe yes it's likely to come through scientific ways through uh, science it's going to come through science the bible says that the antichrist coming let's look at it um in verse 9 of second thessalonians chapter 2 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9. He says, Even him, referring to the Antichrist, whose coming is after the walking of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they received not the love of truth. So he is going to come through some scientific way it's not going to be natural things are going to take place that through which the spirit of that person because the bible describes the antichrist as the one who was who is not and yet is meaning he lived he died he's coming back and the bible describes that the bottomless pit was opened all right so a lot of things make me believe that is likely to be nimrod as i said it's my personal opinion that is likely to be Nimrod coming back again, the, the head that had a deadly wound and it was healed. Returning, because it's going to come through a scientific way. The Bible describes it as the workings of Satan with all power and lying wonders. So now, for him to manifest, there must be sufficient iniquity on the earth. The Bible says in verse 7 that the mystery of iniquity is already at work, but whoever, there is someone that is restraining the Antichrist from manifesting. Some people have said that the restrainer is the Holy Spirit. That's not true because they say that ah, when the rapture takes place, the Holy Spirit will leave the earth and then the Antichrist can manifest. The Holy Spirit has been on earth from creation. He didn't come on the day of Pentecost. Go to Acts chapter 2 and read it carefully. The Spirit of God came upon the people. Not the Spirit of God came to the earth. The Spirit of God came upon the people. And even prior to that, the Bible says that John the Baptist was full of the Holy Spirit. He was full of the Holy Spirit in his mother's womb. And Jesus said, I will be with you till the end of time. In Matthew chapter 28, the last verse. If the rapture is not the end, so the Holy Spirit is still with us. Because Christ is with us by, through the Holy Spirit. So to say that the rapture takes place, the Holy Spirit goes, and then the devil, the Antichrist is able to act because the restrainer is gone is wrong. Because the Holy Spirit remains till the end. The Bible says there will be saints at the time of the great tribulation. Is Jesus not with the saints? 
don't they have the Holy Spirit? You know, we were taught that the Holy Spirit will leave, and then the people that are left, those that repent, will now pay the price with their stress, with their own strength, that there will no more be grace, that they will have to struggle to stay alive. That's unscriptural. There were no scriptures, no scriptures to support that. We were just taught, and we continue teaching until God opened our eyes to see that we were doing the wrong thing. Jesus said he will give, he will not leave us comfortless, but the Holy Spirit will be with us till the end. So the Holy Spirit is not the restrainer. He is not leaving the earth. He has been here. He only began to enter people in mass when Christ died and resurrected. On the day of Pentecost, that was when it started. Because now we became the temple of God, not that building in Jerusalem. So it's not the Holy Spirit. The restrainer is not the body of Christ because the body of Christ will remain. Jesus said when he comes, he will send his angels to gather his people. His people are his body. So are you saying those people that are there are not part of the body of Christ? No. The saints are not the restrainer. If not, Paul would have said, we are the restrainer. Yet he says, he he is referring to someone. That someone is likely to be an angel assigned to ensure the Antichrist does not manifest ahead of time. Don't forget that angels have assignments. Angels are the ones that take our prayers up, bring the blessings down. An angel looks over each geographical location. Each nation is being looked after by an angel. So, another thing I want to show you is this. If you say, oh, the saints are the ones restraining, the Bible always refers to the church as a she in the feminine context, never as a he. It says his church, his bride, he says he here. He here. Paul, when writing the scriptures, actually thought Jesus was going to come during his time. That is why when he was writing, he said, we who remain. He didn't say those people that will be here. He thought Jesus was coming during his time. So he said, we who are alive will be caught up. He expected Christ to come in his time. So he's referring to someone, most likely an angel assigned to keep the Antichrist at bay. Don't forget, it's an angel, Angel Michael, that threw out Lucifer from heaven, from the third heaven. And he's going to throw him down from the second heaven. Angel Michael. God offered an angel to take the children of Israel to Egypt when he was angry with the Israelites. He told Moses, I will send my angel to take you. I won't go with you. My angel will do that. And Moses said, no, we want you. So an angel was ready on standby to take the nation of Israel into the, sorry, into the land of Canaan, not Egypt, into the land of Canaan. An angel was on standby. There are angels on assignment. So if it were the church, it would be she, not he. If it was the Holy Spirit, it would not make sense. The Holy Spirit does not leave this earth. Because there is a covenant that as long that as long as there is a believer in Christ Jesus, the Holy Spirit is here. And there will be believers in the time of the great tribulation. The Bible says that the Antichrist will do so much evil and that they that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. So in the time the Antichrist is doing crazy stuff, they that know their God will be strong and do exploits. And Jesus said, without me you can do nothing. Jesus said that when the spirit of truth is come, we can witness of him with power. So the power to witness, the power to do anything is the Holy Spirit. So how can people be strong and do exploits in the great tribulation without the Holy Spirit? It makes no sense. 
that was what we believed. We didn't see it in the Bible. We just, okay, pastor said it, pastors, pastor said it, pastors, pastors, pastor said it. So it must be settled. It makes no sense. It's not the Holy Spirit. It's not the church. There is an angel attached to, for that purpose on earth to ensure there is a restraint, that there is a restraint on the Antichrist. The Antichrist power is iniquity. When people turn their backs on God, it empowers the devil to act because there is no defense for them. Welcome, Tammy Martin. Thank you for joining there is no more defense. When you know what you are doing is wrong and you go ahead to do it, you are incurring wrath. In my Bible, verse 7 is small letters. Some people, you know, translators decided to put in their ideas. All right, they put in their own ideas. That is why you have the Schofield Bible and some other people, they put in their ideas. You can see it here in mine, verse 7. That's where I'm touching. It's small letters. It's not the Holy Spirit. We were taught that, but there's no... The Holy Spirit does not leave the earth when God's people are here. It doesn't leave the earth. The Holy Spirit was in the earth even before man was created. The Bible says the Spirit of God moved upon the waters and God said, let there be light. The Godhead was at work from the beginning. The Holy Spirit did not come on the day of Pentecost. He only baptized on the day of Pentecost. That was when Jesus baptized us with the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. The Bible doesn't say and the Holy Spirit came to earth. It says he came upon them. So, how do we combat iniquity around us? How do we deal with the issue of iniquity around us? Pardon me, this message is long, but it will do you a lot of good. I'm going to rush through this. I will call out the scriptures. I may not read them. I want to show you how iniquity has spread to empower the enemy to mess with the minds of people such that they don't think properly. One way is the love of money. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. The Bible says the love of money, not money. The love of money is the root of all evil. Because people love money. They are releasing evil. This is how the mystery of iniquity works. The love of money, evil is released. All manner of sin is released. Two, how is it that the mystery of iniquity is able to affect believers? Bitterness. Number two, bitterness. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15. The Bible says that the root of bitterness defiles many. When believers are persecuted, heavily persecuted, there is a tendency that bitterness takes root. And that is why the Bible says we should pray for our enemies. While praying for your enemies, you are killing any root of bitterness. So we pray for our enemies to ensure that there is no root of bitterness in our heart. This, number two, affects the church. This is how iniquity creeps into the church. Bitterness, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15. Number three, lust and desire for pleasure. James chapter 4, verse 1. The Bible says that, the Bible says, how does war and strife come amongst believers and non-believers? How does it come? It says, because of lusts. And desire for pleasure. James chapter 4, verse 1. He says, I want to read it. From where comes war and fighting among you? Is it not even from your lusts that war in your members? So lusts and desire for pleasure has unleashed wars 
and fightings. That is how the iniquity force is created through lusts. Why is it that Hollywood glorifies money without and saying how the money is gotten? In many churches, I know in my country here, many churches you hear very stupid things as testimonies. Somebody gets up, and, and I'm not exaggerating. Like someone gets up and says he began the year as a tenant. This is an, a testimony that was given in a church, right? A church that is known as a prosperity church. He said at the beginning of the year he was a tenant and he was jobless. And by, I believe it was about the middle of the year or so, he said he had built houses, bought lands. And the church erupted in dance. And, hey, miracle. No question of what did he do in a few months that got him houses and lands. And we know that Nigeria is known for corruption, unfortunately. The corruption is in the churches. And so you have these thieves who are cyber criminals, who are involved in rituals, killing people for money, using them as sacrifices for money. They are in the church celebrated because they come out and say that this church I joined, man, I got so much millions in two months. They don't ask, what did you do? Did you get a job? Did you get promoted? No, just I just I hit money within 24 hours. And the, the criminal pastors will tell their members, bring 10,000 naira. And if you sow 10,000 naira, you are going to get 100,000 within two days. And the people say, yay. That's like saying, bring $100 and if you will get $1,000 in a few days. Bring $100 and the yoke of poverty will be broken in your life. And what happens when people start thinking that way? Criminality increases. Wickedness increases. Fightings increase. Violence, hatred come out because of lusts for pleasure. So that's number three. Number four, this is a, this number four way the iniquity force is released is through sexual immorality. When sexual immorality becomes a culture, all manner of wickedness is released. You see that in Leviticus. Leviticus is in the Old Testament. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 29. In Leviticus chapter 19, verse 29, the Bible says, Do not prostitute your daughter, lest the land become full of sexual immorality and there abound all manner of wickedness. So wickedness of every kind, according to Leviticus chapter 19, verse 29, wickedness of of every kind is released when sexual immorality becomes culture. Carla, I will pray with, uh, with you in a moment at the end of this teaching. I've seen your comment, Carla. So when sexual immorality becomes normal, all manner of wickedness is released. And then lastly, true occult practices. True occult practices. You can see that all over the scriptures. Idol worship, um, palm reading, um, fortune telling. And let me tell you, Nigeria, I'm using Nigeria as an example. Nigeria has issues with Boko Haram. They have issues with ISIS. They have issues with Fulani killers. These Fulani headsmen, they call themselves headsmen. They are not taking care of cattle. They just go to the farms, kill and rape and rob. Messing around the country, the economy is, is a mess. The economy of Nigeria is in a mess. <laughs> Government is a joke. Do you know one thing that is common in Nigerian churches? Occult practices. How, what do they do? Many pastors bury human beings alive, some bury dead people into in their church building, 
and then you see crowd coming in and money is coming. Whatever they tell the people, it happens. Some of them use charms. Many use charms. I have encountered. I'm not saying what I don't know. I have encountered. And one thing that is rampant now is pastors are falling over themselves to predict the future, which is fortune telling. They, they call it prophecy. It's not prophecy. They stand and they want to be seen that they know what somebody wore yesterday. They want to be seen to know how much money is in someone's account. When it is time for America's election, you know, the last election, they were falling over themselves, predicting people and or some of the prominent people were predicting Hillary Clinton would win. When she didn't win, they kept their mouth shut. They didn't apologize. It is fortune telling in the name of prophecy. Prophecy is always tied to the word of God to give direction in the service of God. Prophecy is always according to the word of God to give direction in the service of God. When a word comes out, God can say, look here, by this time tomorrow, something is going to happen. And this is why it will happen for the work of God to move forward. But when prophecy is about making the man feel big, he says, I am so, so, and so, and this is what happened yesterday. Somebody was pursuing you, and everybody is jumping. This man can see, okay, come and tell me what will happen tomorrow. It becomes fortune telling. It is common in Nigerian churches. And that is why there has been a release of wickedness in the land and it is come i believe in other countries you have people that are jumping to claim that they are prophets coronavirus came around and so people were claiming that they have seen vision that the thing will end by march all over the world it didn't end some came out and said oh god told them that this thing is they are going they are the ones that have been sent by god there was even one clown He's, a, he's supposed to be a pastor, but he, he seems more as an agent of darkness. That guy doesn't have the spirit of God. I, have, I watched the clip. I could discern. This person is an agent of darkness. He was boasting that he, how, how, can, corona, how can there be a pandemic where he is? That in fact, he's going to China. People say, don't worry, go to China. We'll donate and buy you tickets. Go to Wuhan. After boasting and bragging that he's going to, he has been anointed to change everything, there will no more be a virus. We were waiting to hear he has gone to China. After some time, he came out and said, uh, uh, he started giving some very vain excuses that he had seen a vision that people should bathe with salty water, they should put salt in water and pour it on their body. The virus will not get to them. What stupidity! And you have people that are still in such a place. Why? The mystery of iniquity. Because they, have, they know they should go to their Bible and spend time in the presence of God. No. They want someone to just tell them visions. The power of iniquity grips them. And messes them up. And I was looking at people still listening to such a, a liar. I have used my country as an example you can look at yours and you are going to see evidences of number one, the love of money, bitterness, lust after pleasures, uh, sexual immorality becoming culture, and you are going to see a lot of occult practices. These things are what generate and keep running the iniquity force, what some people call negative vibrations, negative energy. These are the things that push it. This is the energy that comes out as mystery of iniquity. And as it grips the world, it is getting to a level that sin becomes embodied. Remember, Jesus is, the Bible says, in him dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Meaning, you see Jesus, you see the Father. You see God the Father, right? Jesus said, I and my Father are one. God manifested himself as his word. He spoke himself into the womb of Mary to be formed as a man. That is, Jesus and God are one. He spoke himself into the womb of Mary. So that word became a person. He was 100% God. He was 100% man. The embodiment of sin, the man of sin can only manifest when iniquity reaches a particular level. The atmosphere is right 
for everything God hates to be in human flesh. Just like at the, when God spoke to Mary, and Mary said, Be it unto me according to your word, the atmosphere was right for everything that God loves to be in a human form, Jesus Christ. So also the mystery of iniquity will rise to a point that everything that God hates will be in, in flesh, in the form of flesh. And that is why the Antichrist is called the man of sin. Jesus is the man of righteousness. The Antichrist is the man of sin. So brethren, how does it ap apply to you as an individual? Ensure that as much as possible, the iniquity force is absent in your life. Ensure that you avoid iniquity. Ensure you avoid sin. Pray and ask God to make you love righteousness and hate iniquity. That way, the iniquity force will not be at work in your life. It may be at work around the world. It will not be at work in your life. Some of you are wondering why you are seeing the whole new world order play out. And yet, people, despite their education, are not seeing it happen. You see people are panicking and making such stupid theories, believing such foolish lies. And you are wondering, why is it that I am woke and they are not? Why is it that you, are, you, you can see and they can't? The reason is, since they refuse to acknowledge God in their life, to acknowledge him as God, the mystery of iniquity has taken over them. God has given them up to a reprobate mind, to a mind that is not good anymore, a mind that has lost its, its salt. And so they believe a lie. The Bible says he gave them up so that they can believe a lie. So they believe the lies being told them. They are trying to live a fairy tale because they did not acknowledge him as God. You as a believer, acknowledge acknowledge God in your life. The Bible says in all your ways acknowledge him. I want to pray with you as we end this service. As we end this service. I want to pray first of all for those who, are, who want to give their lives to Jesus Christ. Now, thereafter I will be praying for uh, the sick. If you want to give your heart to Jesus Christ to be free from the mystery of iniquity I want you to pray this prayer with me. You can repeat the words or use your own words, but make sure the message is passed. Lord God Almighty, I come to you today with thanksgiving. I thank you for the work on the cross, sending your son Jesus Christ to die for me. I confess I am a sinner. I repent and I ask that you wash me with the blood of Jesus, please. I confess and accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Write my name in your book of life and keep me holy and righteous till the day I meet you. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of Jesus, I pray for Carla. I rebuke that sickness and affliction. I command the affliction to cease in Jesus' name. I break the curses of witchcraft against you, the, those curses pronounced against you. I break them right now in the name of Jesus. I release you from the spirit of paralysis. I release you now in Jesus' name. Rise up and walk. Be healthy. Be strong. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, receive healing. And everyone sick right now, receive your healing in the name of Jesus. I break those curses upon you in the name of Jesus be healed 
be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. And so right now we're going to take the communion. I'm going to make it uh, snappy. On living bread, this is how Jesus said we should remember him. So quarantine, lockdown does not stop us from remembering our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He said we should remember him by breaking bread in communion, on living bread, bread without yeast, salt, flour, water, oil mixed together, baked, gives you this, without yeast. This is how he said we should remember him. So even if you are not able to go out and party, you are not able to go out and have some fun, the most important thing, those things are not bad. When I mean party, I don't mean drinking and smoking. I mean just go out with friends and eat and drink non-alcoholic beverages. That's good, right? So even if you can't do that, this is the most important thing, all right? Doing this is the most important one. The others you can do at another time. Father, I thank you for every bread lifted up. We thank you for every wafer lifted up. We ask, Lord, that you please bless them and make them the body of Jesus Christ in us, that everything lacking in us, we will will receive it now. Every good thing in our lives that was destroyed will be replaced with a new one from the body of Jesus Christ. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So you take it. Get your cup. It could be water. It could be, that is if you don't have any juice, you can put some water in a cup. Jesus turned water into wine. You can take fruit juice, non-alcoholic wine. You just lift it up. And brethren, please share this video. Um, Please do share it. I'm unable to share or do anything right now, but I know after the broadcast, I'll I'll be able to do some stuff. And don't forget to pray for us. We are being attacked regularly. So my equipment have been malfunctioning and also some of them need replacement. But God is in control. Thank you for... The support I received a donation. If I received donations recently, God bless you for donating. Thank you for for your support, and I know that soon we'll be upgrading our equipment. As to God be the glory. Lift up your cup, Lord. We thank you for the cups lifted up. The contents of the cups lifted up. We ask that you turn this um, fruit juice, non-alcoholic wine the water turn into the blood of Jesus Christ in us. Let the life of Christ reign in us. Let the DNA of Christ be in us, that we will walk in righteousness. We will love righteousness and despise evil. Let the life of Christ be in us and be seen through us. We thank you and we invoke the covenant and the blessings of the covenant in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Where's the oil? I'm trying to be fast. Once again, thank you for your donations and your support. Please keep praying for us. As I said, we experience a lot of attacks you can see how even our going live is being attacked. Last uh, Sunday, the um, the video was muted. It was muted when I was teaching on rapture. I had to remove it from YouTube. It was muted, and now I couldn't upload on YouTube. So I had to record it bits and pieces, but it will definitely get to YouTube. Hello, Anna, Anna Makoso. Thank you for joining, Anna. And please share. Everyone watching, please do share the video. You're all welcome. Whether I mention your name or not, I love you and I'm glad to have you. Lift up your anointing oil. 
what is the relevance of the anointing oil? The Bible says that we should anoint the sick and they will be healed. James chapter 5. The Bible also says by reason of the anointing, the yoke is broken. And one way the anointing comes is when the oil is poured upon the head. It happened with David. It happened with the kings of Israel, even with the prophets. So lift up your oil. Lord, we thank you for every oil lifted up. We pray you turn this ordinary oil into holy anointing oil and that you fill this oil with your power and your fire and that any who is sick that is anointed will be healed the oppressed will be delivered protection and favor will be upon all that are anointed we thank you for answering our prayer in jesus name amen so you take it in your hand just a little place on your head you say i receive it in jesus name and then you can place just like that on your entrance door or on the floor of your home and pray that the Lord will bring in his presence and that every evil presence would flee. Yeah, I'm going to, yeah, what we're doing now is uh, we are recording it using, uh, actually the phone I was using had issues so we couldn't, we had to put it down. We are using my wife's phone now to take another part of this service. So probably YouTube, we are going to have like two or three patches of this live on YouTube. I'm going to upload it as I can. So it may not be one complete message as it was those of you who are watching it through Facebook. It may come in bits or what I may do is I may find time later in the week and just focus on youtube just go live on youtube or record a video somehow using this phone and upload it either of those ways um, so if i see the recording is chopped up too many times i will just probably in, in a day or two put it on youtube this time around i'll use we actually need equipment but thank god for the support that has been coming in we are gathering and soon we would upgrade all our equipment somebody asked the question that while i'm live there's a humming sound in the background there's this sound like they hear in the background okay i'm going to tell you now so you don't think it's birds flying or lions fighting all right um this is the situation we have electricity issues in the country i stay and so most of the time all the time i'm live it's a generator i use so that's why you are hearing a humming sound when I am live, okay? It's a generator, gasoline generator. Some of you may never have seen such, but that's the electricity supply we can rely on. And so you pardon the sound in the background. With time, we would upgrade uh, our, well, I say facilities, we would upgrade it with time in a way that you would not hear any sound in the background. You will not hear the sound of a fan because there are two sounds that you may hear. Yeah, one is a fan, one is a generator. So we we'll, would we'll work on it such that uh, you wouldn't hear the sound of a fan. Probably would we'll be in uh, an air-conditioned place using a very a, a bigger engine, the bigger generator that can carry the air conditioner. The one we are using, the generator we are using can only carry a fan. It can't carry an air conditioner. So you can you can cut the video now. You can um, uh, expect that in the future you will have better quality sound. I have to open up because people have wondered what is happening that we hear this background noise. That's what it is. Okay. And so with time, it will be... It, the, the equipment will be improved, the facilities will be improved. It's a non, how would I put it now? We are not a church denomination, all right? This ministry is committed to taking the gospel and teaching the gospel around the world. I don't pastor a local church. So the support for this ministry comes from you watching. It's not from 
one congregation that every Sunday, every Wednesday, there's an offering so we can put things in order. No, the donations come from you who are listening, not from any congregation. I just go around preaching and teaching. And if you want to say I'm a pastor, I'm a pastor, all right? But I'm a pastor, I pastor you. I do not pastor a local congregation, okay? I, I, these are my services online. And then I hold programs in churches. I hold crusades and all that. So the support comes from you who are listening, who are touched by God to support this work we do. And thank God, as soon as the travel ban is lifted, we are going to be moving to other nations preaching the gospel. Thank you for joining the service. I felt I should explain. Uh, let me just explain to you why uh, these things have been. So, uh, thank you for joining. Thank you for your support and your prayers, your your messages, and your love. I appreciate it. I, and feel free to ask questions. Okay? Ask questions. If anything is bothering you, if you don't understand anything, you can send me a message through this page. All right, there's provision to send me a message through this page. Send me a message. I will reply you. People send messages from various countries and in various languages, in Hindi, in Spanish, they send to me and I reply them. There's a phone number on the page also. It's a WhatsApp number. You can also call me directly through that number or you can send a WhatsApp message through that number. I will reply you. God called me to take and teach the gospel to all nations. And so I am committed to doing that. And it is my joy when you understand the scriptures. So I'm very much available. You can even call me video call. But if you want to call me through video call, you have to let me know ahead of time. Hello, Giselle Lopez. You're welcome. It's been a while. Blessings to you, Giselle, and to your family. God bless you. So you, you can, if you want to call me and have a conversation with me, FaceTime or audio, you let me know ahead, maybe like five minutes ahead, you send me a message so that I can uh, be in a position to receive video calls, uh, audio calls. Thank you. Please share this video and keep on commenting, liking, and sharing. Your comments, when I read them, I usually reply them. And sometimes if it's not a comment that I should reply, I can acknowledge it by clicking a like so that you know that I have seen your comments. And keep commenting, keep sharing. Please do share this video. Let people understand what is happening, why it is happening. And remember, the mystery of iniquity has no power over you. As long as you remain in Christ, the power of God, not the power of the devil, the power of God is at work in you and through you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. If you want to support this ministry, um, PayPal doesn't work where I am. All right, I can only spend with PayPal. I can't receive with PayPal. There is a GoFundMe link. I will put it as a comment here. You could use that one. Or if you want another way to support, you can send me a message. Send me a message, David Igbona Ministries. You can use this page to send me a message. Or you can send me a message through WhatsApp, through the number on my page, or through my profile. Send it to me. I will let you know how you can donate and it will get directly to me because I don't like giving my account details just publicly like that. Okay? So pardon the um, less technologically advanced financial system in which I operate in my location. It's just one of those things. We are coming up. We are coming up. God bless you. Thank you.